Saint Charles Couture Sewing Page. I'm your host, Kay Stewart. If you're brand new to my page, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos that I'm going to be posting for you each week. Today we're going to be doing McCall 79.45 because it is sundress season, and y'all know I love a good sundress. I did tell you all previously that I am transitioning because I bought, I'm buying a home in North Carolina, so I'm currently at my mom's house hanging out with her for a little while until the house is done. And because of that, I don't have my sewing studio. So I'm used to, you know, making videos and I have a lot of space and I have this machine over here and this one over here and I have lights and all that good stuff. Well, we don't have that. And I just said, you know what, and I wasn't going to make any sewing videos while I was transitioning, but I figured, you know what, I used to sew on the floor. I used to put my sewing machine on the floor, sew me some stuff. So like I'm in my mom's basement right now. So that's why you see it like stuff behind me. But, you know, I have my food tray here with my sewing machine on it. And I'm also housing the deep freezer for my serger. Now, what I am going to be doing different on my videos, like this video and the ones coming forward until I'm actually in the house, is you won't actually be seeing me sewing the items. Like we're going to talk about what I'm going to do. I'm going to go do it and then I'm going to come back and show you what I've done. So I know that's going to be a little different, but we're going to work it out. We'll figure it out together. So grab your pattern. Here's mine, my call 79.45, and we're doing View D right here because I just love this dress. I think this dress is so cute. It's cool, but it's long enough, so at nighttime, if it gets a little cool, you're not cold. And I love that about a good sundress. So we're going to begin. Again, grab your materials and grab your fabric. So I moved downstairs because upstairs was a little crowded, and I couldn't get the lighting right inside the room. So we're in my mom's basement. And you can see I have my little setup here. Look at my little food tray, y'all. And I have my sewing machine on there. I got my stool so I can sit down and win it. And if you look over there in that corner, you can see it in the mirror. But I have the serger sitting on the deep freezer. So that's my setup for today. Again, I told y'all, we're not going to make any excuses, y'all. It's sundress season, and I need some cute sundresses. So we're going to make some sundresses. I know I said I wasn't going to make any sewing videos, but I changed my mind. Again, I used to sew on the floor. So this right here is way more than enough space that I need. So let's begin. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you cut out all your pattern pieces in your material and your fabric. If you have any interfacing, you want to go ahead and take care of your interface and get that out the way. You want to make sure that you have some scissors. Definitely need scissors when you're sewing. You also want to make sure that you have a seam ripper because you just might make a mistake. You might have to take that seam out. So make sure you have a seam ripper. You want to make sure that you have some pins. This is what I mean when I say have some pins. This is my little tomato. I think I've had her now for probably five or six years, maybe even longer. I'm not sure. But you want to make sure that you have a lot of pins. Today we're doing a long sundress. And if you're brand new at sewing, you want to make sure that you pin your things together. You may see me sewing some things and it's not pinned together, but do not. Please, 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 please forgive me. I'm only doing that because I've been sewing for a long time, but I'm going to tell you something. When you're brand new and you're a beginner sewer or you're a novice sewer or you're an advanced sewer, you want to make sure that you have your material pieces together and they're not slipping apart when you're sewing. You don't want any gaps or any spaces. So use your pins. Here's another tip. Before you begin sewing a pattern, what you want to do is you want to take the instructions out of the sleeve. This is what I do and this help is very helpful for me. And not just because I'm making sewing videos, but just period, like when I'm sewing together and I'm using a pattern. Take your instructions out and read them like one or two days in advance. Write your markings on there. Let you know. So that way you know. You know what? Okay, when I do this, I need to use this stitch or I need to use this. You can write all of this stuff on this paper. These are your instructions. They're not going anywhere. Even if you're making this for somebody else, it's good to have these instructions on hand and that you know up front like what's going to kind of happen next. So with that being said, the first thing that we need to do is, and I've already told you to go ahead and make sure that you got all your interfacing on your pieces that need to have interfacing on it. And we're using a fusible interfacing today. So you want to have that. Now, because that's the first thing it tells us in the instructions. Fuse interfacing to the wrong side of each matching fabric sections following the manufacturer's instructions. So now we're going to begin. First thing we want to do is we want to grab our bodice fronts. And we're going to sew them together the way they have instructed us to do here. Now we're going to be following the directions of this to the T. I'm going to do everything that they told me to do in these instructions, and we're going to go through each one of them together. So this is the first thing it says for us to do is to grab our bodice fronts, which are pieces number one. So let's grab those. 
these are my bodice fronts right here. And you should have four of them cut because this is actually going to be the facing for your bodice. So this is why they normally have you cut more than one piece or more than two pieces. And don't put the inner the fusing on there is because this is actually going to be your facing which is cute because once you actually put the dress on and you flip it inside out you're going to see the right side of the material and that's what you want you don't want to have the wrong sides of your um dress showing so it's asked us to this is why i tell you get your pants it's asked us to go ahead and sew down the front of our bodice front and across the middle under the arm so I'm gonna grab some pins so you can see because y'all know what that means pinning means sewing so grab you some pins like this and we're just gonna pin all the way up like this so I know exactly where I need to sew you want to make sure that you transferred all your markings too that is very important y'all when y'all are cutting out your pattern pieces and you're using tracing paper make sure that you put your markings on there so you know exactly what they mean when you're looking at the instructions and the instructions say oh only sew between this part and this part now you know exactly what they're talking about and the same thing we're going to do under the arm we're going to start here at the square and we're going to go around to this last mark here right there So this is what your piece should be looking like right now. So I've pinned it all the way down because I know I'm going to sew straight down that way. And then I'm also going to be sewing from here all the way over there. So do that and then I'll be right back and show you the next step. Yeah, so we're on to the next section, which section, which is um, understitching the front part. I'm not doing it. I'm going to just tell y'all some stuff I will skip. You are more than welcome to go ahead and do an understitch of the front side as far as you can. I'm just, I'm just going like this, like, cause I think that's cute enough. Like, I don't need the understitching. You won't even see it, but this is the bodice piece that's gonna be in the front, and I'm okay with that. Like, so I have my two pieces already done. I flipped them inside out because the next thing we have to do is we have to base the bottom edges. So go ahead and take your piece and flip it inside out like this. Go to your iron board and give it a good press. Now I did forget the iron, y'all can't remember everything I did forget the iron and I did forget the ironing board so I'm gonna go upstairs and get it because um, at the end of this I'm gonna use my heat press to really give it a good press at the end so once you've gotten that pressed down go ahead and get you some pins and we're gonna pin it because we're just gonna base the bottom edge together and I think that's gonna be helpful at the end when we start actually putting the um, top of this dress and the bottom of the dress together so go ahead and pin it just like this. Pin it. See the pins underneath? Pinning means sewing. Now when you base it, you want to make sure that you change your stitch all the way to the highest stitch limit that you can. Because a basing stitch is just temporary. We're just putting it in there to keep the pieces in place. Not for the thick end. Um, sorry, pinning. Yeah, I gotta tell you something real cute too. So my mom is the one who actually taught me how to sew and has taught me how to do this since I was about maybe 14-ish, 12, 13, 14 or something. Like middle school age, I've learned I've learned how to sew. So she just came downstairs and messed with me and said, what are you making? I think she just wanted to see my setup because she'll probably be down here sewing. I, I just got a feeling that she about to start sewing again. And if she do, I'm gonna try to video it. And then you can see like, where I learned this from. But anyway, go ahead and base the bottom of these edges together. And then the next step after that is, and I told you we're actually using, I'm gonna be actually using the instructions. Sometimes I look at the instructions and then I just make my own instructions, but we're actually gonna follow the instructions. So the next thing we're gonna be doing for dress D, after you base your at bottoms, is we're gonna be going to, uh, okay here we go so we're going to get the lower side front and we're going to put the side fronts to the lower side front so if you're doing view d with me then you're going to skip down from 
instruction number five to instruction number 10. So you wanna make sure you go ahead and grab these two, three pieces, because we're gonna pin them and then we're gonna sew them together. And I'll be right back. One other tip that you should know, especially when you're doing a long dress or dress with like big pieces or that you have to put like the fronts together and the sides together. I kind of put my pieces together so that I know which ones I'm grabbing for each instruction. So I know for instruction number 10, I need piece two and piece number three. So this is what I do. I keep my, even when I cut them, I keep my sewing pieces with the pattern piece. That way I know exactly which one I'm going to. So this is piece number two, which we need, which is our lower front, piece number two. And we're also going to be using piece number three. Now, if you're making multiple dresses and you've cut out multiple pieces, you cannot keep the pattern piece with those pieces. So what you can do is get you a little transfer pin and you write the piece number on the top, like on the back side. You can just put number two there. So when you go to see, it's like, oh, this is piece number two. You can grab piece number two and piece number three and get busy. So I have my piece number two, which is my lower front. And I'm going to actually be pinning right sides facing piece number three on each side. So I'm gonna do that and I'm pinning all the way down. And then I'll come back and you can see the next pin. I mean, and then I'll come back and show you that it's all pinned and then we'll go ahead and sew it together. Okay, so I have my lower front with my side fronts pinned together, as you can see there. Again, make sure you use your pins, especially when you have a, a material that's a long. You want to make sure that your stuff is not shifting. Um, when I finish this, I'm also going to surge this. Again, sorry that I won't necessarily be able to show you me doing the sewing and the surgeon but just know that i am so i'm going to go ahead and sew this down and then give it a good surge and then we're going on to the next step all right y'all so i got piece number two and piece number three sewn together and i've also went ahead and hit it with my serger because y'all know i like a nice clean finish and we want to make them look we want it to look as professional as possible you don't want to be walking around people are looking at you like oh who made that but so far, so good. I'm loving what I'm seeing. The next thing it's telling us to do is to grab this piece that we've just constructed. And we're going to grab those top pieces and we're going to pin them together. So I'm going to change the setup a little bit so that you can see me pin the top and the bottom together. Because I think that's a very important step. And we don't want to miss anything. And if we miss something, we're going to miss it together. So give me two seconds to get a new setup so you can see me actually pin the two pieces together okay so you should have your two bodice pieces and they should be looking like this only the top edge of this should be kind of open up there but everything else you should have a base and stitch going across the bottom so that we can ease it into the um, side fronts and then this side is base to close as well just to keep it in place so grab that and grab the front pieces and i'm just going to lay this on my lap like this lay it on my lap and flip it over so that i have the right sides facing each other and you're going to grab your one of your bodice pieces and we're going to connect this to our skirt front so we're going to lay this down like this oh i'm starting at the edge here i'm going to just put a little pin Just like this now this is the part where you're going to start adjusting the bodice piece so that you can decide how much cleavage you want showing if you don't want any cleavage showing for me I kind of want a little bit of cleavage showing so I'm gonna go up here pin it Now you do have the basting stitch so that you can ease it into if you need to, but I'm not looking like I really need to ease mine into the dress. It looks like it's going naturally. So I won't have to do that, but if you do need to do that, here's what you do. You take the end of that thread and you start pulling it so that you can adjust it like this in between. I wanna do the same thing over here. We'll start at the top. And we're going to start pinning it. I'm sorry. I start on this side. And we're going to pin it all the way over. Same way. Whichever side that you want to be facing outward, you want to make sure you have them two right sides facing together. So I'll get my pins and I'm pinning it down. And I did 
that all the way across. So you get here. So you get up to the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pin from the middle and I'm going to use it to pin both of the middle seams together right here at this middle corner that it has it. So I'm going to pin that down like that. And then I'll put another pin right here. So now I have my dress bodice piece connected with my top piece. So it should look like this for you. And add another pin. See, pins on y'all. Pins are good. They really help keep your stuff in place. And then you can look at it before you make a, a final decision on how it should look. You have a chance to eyeball it and say, yeah, yeah, I don't like that. Or yes, I do like that. So, anyhow, this is how yours should be looking right now. Once you have that sewn down. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to sew it down. I'm going to use my serger and clean that edge off. And then I'm going to press it down. If you don't have a serger, don't worry about it. You can just use a zigzag, a small zigzag stitch at the end and press it face down. Now, the instructions is going to tell you to do some other things. Like you can just do half of it and you can pin it and tuck it and all that. But we're using our machine today. We're not doing the other stuff. We want to make it a nice, simple, cute little dress without those extra stuff. Because we don't need it. And again, once you have finished off your edge and you sew it down it's gonna look so nice you won't even need it now if you were doing like a, a simple pattern that didn't have like I'm using stripes so I don't need to really put like top stitching but if it, this was like a plain material then you could do like a nice top stitch in an alternate color and that would just make the dress pop a little bit more so next thing you want to do is go ahead and where you have them pinned because y'all know what that means pinning means sewing we're going to start from one edge and we're going to go all the way up to the middle and then we're going to start on the other edge and come back up and meet them at the middle so i'll do that and i'll come back and show you the next step okay y'all so we should have your front part of your dress should be completed and it should be looking like this right now so you have your bodice attached to your middle and your side fronts like that now we're going to do something a little different because I'm going to add pockets to my dress. Now, they don't add pockets until later on in the instructions, but we're going to add it to the front part of our dress right now. Since the front part is dressed, I mean done, we're going to go ahead and finish our pockets, and then we won't have to touch this front part again until we're adding the both together. So, grab your pockets. Let me put it down so you can see a little bit. Okay. So you should have four pieces cut out for your pockets if you're making pockets. If you're not making pockets, you can skip this little part. Now, you want to go ahead and grab the front of your dress. Now, you should have a notch on your dress, just like that. So you want to take your dress, you want to make it right sides facing each other, and go ahead and pin your notches together. Sorry, y'all, this material is um, is light because it's a, a really light cotton knit and it's folding over. So just find your notches. Again, this isn't a race, so take your time and make sure that your dress is done the proper way. Find your notches and grab you some pants and go ahead and pin it together. Do that on both sides. And then we're going to sew it down. Then once you've added your pockets on the front side, we're just going to put this piece to the side until after we finish the back part.
Okay, so go to your machine. Sew your pockets on the front side if you're doing pockets. And then I'll show you the next step. All right, y'all. So the front of your dress should be already constructed together. And we're going to push that to the side. Remember, I went ahead and added my pockets on it to save you a step later on back in the day. So you only have to do one set of pockets instead of both at the same time. So you want to grab piece number five. And we're going to do some stay stitching from the top of our dress all the way down to the back edge of our notches. That's why it's important to make sure that when you're transferring your, pa your pattern over into the material, that you make sure you get all your notches and you want to make all your markings on there. So again, we're just stay stitching from the top of the dress and we're going all the way down to this little mark that I have on my dress here. So you want to do that for both pieces. And then we're going to grab piece number four, which is our back piece. And mine is one, two, sorry, I had it in my hand. Okay, here's my piece number four. Once you've done your stay stitching, you want to grab piece four, and we're going to attach the side backs to the middle back. And this is our back piece. This is piece number four. So go ahead and grab them, and we're going to put them right sides facing. And we're going to pin them down to each other. Remember, I told you I'm working in a condensed space, but it's all good, y'all. We're going to continue to press forward and sew on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and attach these two pieces together. And you're going to pin it down. Now, if you're wondering about how you should put your pins in your material when you're sewing, I like to put my pins horizontally on my materials because so it looks like this so that way no matter what side you're sewing on you can pull it out of your material as you're sewing as you're going down your sewing machine so you don't but if you do it this way if you turn it and some people do this like this and pin it this way but then that just means that you have to make sure you're sewing on this side so you can grab that pin but if you do it this way so that the pin is sticking out no matter what side you have to sew on you could just grab it as you're going okay so enough of that let me continue to pin on down the end and we can just talk as i'm pinning because i'm going to pin both sides so there is like a little controversy going on right now about women in their bonnets now i'm gonna tell y'all I got my head scarf on right now. And yes, I wear my head scarf in the house. But I don't wear it outside. Am I the only one who doesn't wear a bonnet outside to the grocery store or to the airport? Um, I just don't do it. I don't know. So I'm just saying that to say, um, Auntie Monique, if you're watching this video, it's only for the video. Once you see me with the actual dress on later on, you'll be like, okay, yeah, she ain't wearing no bonnet because I'm not. So, anywho, go ahead and get your sides back pinned to your back like I'm doing here. Sew those down. I'm also going to run it through my serger because y'all know I like a nice, clean look when I'm done. And again, I'm actually going to wear this dress today. Um, my goddaughter's had a graduation, so today is the graduation cookout that I will be attending for a little bit. And this is a perfect dress to wear for today because it's hot outside. <coughs> Excuse me. But this dress is also cool enough to be out there. And then y'all know these cicadas are out. I don't know about y'all, but I said this year I'm not going to be afraid of no cicadas, and I'm not. But this dress is also good. That way I ain't got to worry about it being like under my dress because the dress is long. So that'll protect me from the cicadas like flying up my dress or jumping on my legs and stuff like that. So that's just me. But I just feel like I'm wearing that right now, so I'll stop. 
Anywho, go ahead and pin pieces number five after you've done the stay stitch to pieces number four, to piece number four. Take it over to your sewing machine and go ahead and sew them down. Again, I'm going to make sure you finish off your edge. If you don't have a serger, it's okay. You can use a small zigzag stitch or you can just press it out flat because these materials now that we're working with are going to be way lighter and they'll be easier to just iron. And that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so you should have your back finished now. As you can see, I have piece four and piece five together. All the way down the back. I've also went ahead and surged my edges off. But if you don't have a serger, don't worry about it. It's all good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab piece number six which is our back facing. You should already have your inner, fa inner facing on the back of it sewn down. And it also tells you to finish off the bottom edge. And I've already done that with my serger. Again, if you don't have a serger, don't trip. Just use a very small zigzag stitch and that will give you that same effect. Or you can take some peeking shears and cut the bottom off so that way it doesn't fray. And we're gonna attach this to the back of the dress. So I'm gonna scoot it down so you can see. So we have the top of the dress, top of the back of the dress, and we're going to put them right sides facing to each other. I like to start at the collar. So right sides facing like that. Or you can start at your notches at the shoulders, whichever one you feel comfortable doing. But we're not going to pin the shoulders because we're not going to, so we're going to leave this open so we can pull it through. So go ahead and start at the collar and I'm pinning it down. So y'all, while I'm here, I'm going to see if I can try to get my mother to do like a sewing project with me and I'm going to secretly video her. She's not a very video friendly person. Like she'll tell you in a minute, oh no, don't put me on that social media stuff. So I'm going to try to trick her. See if I can do it that way. But go ahead and pin it. Like I said, I'm pinning it all the way down from the collar all the way over to the shoulder. But I'm not going to pin the top of the shoulders because we're going to leave those open. And you can also pin this side, I think. So I always grab your instructions. My instructions are right here, handy dandy. And this is where we are right here now. We're on piece, I mean, 15 through 18 is what we're doing. So it's telling us to do the neck. It's telling us to sew the neck, leave the armholes open, and then sew under the armhole down to the end. So that's what we're going to be putting together. Okay. So y'all know what that means. I only try to pin where we're sewing. That way you don't get confused. So go ahead. We're going to start at the end of this. And I'm going to pin it. And I'm pinning this one all the way up till we get to the armholes because we have to have a way to pull it through. So I'm just gonna go from about right here at this mark. You should have a marking to tell you where you need to start on both sides, flip it. So I'm going to start pinning at the mark.
All right, now that I have that pinned, you know what that means. Go over to your sewing machine. Everywhere you have a pin, you're going to go ahead and sew. Then I'll show you the next steps. Okay, so you should be back in the back of your dress. Should be finished. You should have it pressed down. And it should look like this. Ooh, boom. She looking cute, y'all. She ready. That's the inside of your facing of your dress. All right. So now it's saying put your pockets on. So I've already attached the pockets to the front side of my dress. So now we have to attach them to the back side. So same thing that we did in the beginning on the front part. You want to put face down, facing each other. And you're going to find that notch for your pocket. You're going to pin them to each other. Excuse me. Okay. Find it, and you're going to pin it down to each other. Now, on the front pockets, we sewed them. Once we sewed them down, we pressed it forward so that your pocket would lay like this. The back side, we're not going to have to do that. So, we're just going to sew this down. But first, you want to pin it. Let's see. Let's see what we're doing here. So, we have our two pockets, right sides facing. We're going to put them on the notches. And we're just pinning it down. All the way down to the end. Same thing for the other side. At your other side, find that notch that you use for your pocket. And go ahead and pin it. Right sides facing. Go ahead and sew your pockets down to your dress and I'll show you the next step. And if you're not doing pockets, you can go ahead and skip this part. I may even add on there that these are the pockets. So if you're not doing it, you don't have to do it. But you can just fast forward. And probably fast forward is just easier. Just in case you decide to do the dress again and you want to make pockets, then you'll know what to do. Okay, so you should have your pockets on your front of your dress and the back of your dress. So we are going to grab both of the pieces together. So let's get them. Sorry, I don't have a bigger area for you all to see, but this is the front of my dress. And it's the right sides facing me. I'm going to put the right sides facing of the back of the dress on top of it. Now, you have notches and marks and all kind of stuff going on, but let me tell y'all how I do mine. One thing that's not going to be wrong is your pockets. So, I'm going to grab two of my pockets because we are sewing them together now. So grab your both pockets. Yeah, so you can see. All right. So I have the front pocket here. I have the back pocket here. And we're gonna put them down together, right sides facing. And you're gonna pin them in place to each other. Just like this. I'm not going to use a lot of pins on my pockets because I know I still have to do the front sides. So I'm just putting a couple of pins to make sure it stays in place. I don't want certain stuff to move out the way, like the end of the pockets 
I want to make sure those are nice and flat and smooth. So I'm going to pin that down, of course, like that. And then, now that we have the pockets together, you also want to do the top of your pocket as well to make sure that those two pieces are meeting and not unraveling. And then we're working our way on up to the top of the dress. So when you get to the top of the facing, we're going to leave it up. Don't fold it under. Just leave it up because you'll see at the end, once we've closed it together, we're going to fold it under and tack it. And that's going to close off all of that little extra. So just start at the top of your facing here and pin it. And we're pinning both sides down from the top to the bottom. So y'all know what that means. Pinning means sewing. So once you have that pinned, all of them pinned, go over to your sewing machine and sew from the top. You wanna come down. Once you get to your pockets, you wanna come all the way down and then you wanna go around your pocket, come back up your pocket, and then you're gonna go down to the bottom of the dress. And I'll show you the next step. Yeah, hey, uh, okay, so you should have your front of your dress and your back of your dress sewn together like this your pockets should be in there like that everything should be looking good okay so now we gotta play with the shoulder seams now i'm putting my camera down so y'all can see what i'm doing now when we did the top of our dresses we did so down under the underarm hole and we also left the shoulders open so remember we left these parts open now you're going to see why we left these parts open. You want to grab the front of your dress and the back of your dress, right sides facing each other. And we're going to, I'm going to show you exactly how we did it. I hope I can get this so you can really get it, good, so you can see it. Okay, so this is the back of the dress, y'all. This is the front of my dress, and you should have it pressed down good. This is the front of my dress. We're going to open this up, open up your front, and grab the open of the back. So we're gonna put these two right sides facing each other, just like this. And we're gonna open it all the way across like that. Now, I'll do it again so you can catch it. Here's the back of the dress. Here's the front of my dress. And it's already been pressed down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, because we left that opening, this is why, you're gonna take it the top pieces together and we're going to pin them down y'all know what that means if we're pinning that means we're about to sew we're going to sew this down so you have a nice clean finish to the top of your dress where your shoulder seams are lying just like this they go all the way across until the two ends meet Just like that, straight across till you get to the two ends. So pin it. So now that you have that done, we're going over to our sewing machine, do it for both sides, and we're going to go so straight across there. Once we've done that, I'll come back and show you the next step. But go ahead and make sure that you open up both of those sides, right sides facing, and you're going to sew straight across the top. All right, we're back from the machine. So once you have the two pieces at the top sewn together like that, like that, you're going to fold it back over just like this. Find your dress. And now you have a nice clean finish edge to your shoulder seams like that. So that's what your shoulder seam should be looking like right there. Now I'm going to take this over to the machine, I mean the iron, and press it because I haven't pressed it out yet. And I also need to remove those stay stitches that I put in there earlier. But I'll do that once we're cleaning up and finishing up. So that's what your shoulder seam should look like right now. So let me take it and press it. That's what it looks like on the inside. Everything looks nice and good. Be right back.
All right, so I gave it a good press on my ironing machine. Now, one of the directions tell us that these little holes that we have open still, we can slip stitch it, but I'm not gonna do that, y'all. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get my pins out. Just like this. I'm going to make sure everything is matching together, that my edges are folded down, so it's a nice, clean finish. Get a pin. I'm stick my pin in here like this all the way up and around so that it's closed up you don't see any frillies make sure you cut all your trim that excess fabric off so it's nice and easier and smoother to get together and make sure that you're your uh, shoulder seams are matching. Don't have mixed match shoulder seams, y'all. Go ahead, pin that down. Because y'all know I'm just going to run mine through my machine. I don't like hands on. Everybody knows that. If you've been watching me long enough, you know I don't like the hand sew. If I can machine sew it, I'm a machine sew it. It's going to last longer. I'm just going to change my thread. That's all I'm going to do. Because right now I'm using like a turquoise thread. But when I go through there, I'm just going to put a white so that it's almost invisible. Same thing on this side. Go through. I always like to pull my strings real tight. Make sure I don't have anything that's poking out or wants to poke out at the end of it. Go ahead and same thing. Making sure my shoulder seams match. Because that is important. You don't want to be out here and your, so your shoulder seams look crazy. So, just like this. And everything is pinned on this side. Going on over to the other side. Tuck everything under so it's nice and clean. Like that. into there and then, like I said I'm going to just take my machine and I'm just going to run over that open edge and that's going to be it for the top part the next thing you need to do is throw a hem at the bottom of your dress and then you're going to be done so I'm going to do that and come back and show you the finished product got your hem in your dress you are all done yeah I'm so excited about this dress <laughs> I don't have my body double with me, so I can't put it on her and let you all see it. But here's the finished result of the dress. Y'all, I love it. The pockets are here. Y'all know I like a good sundress with some pockets. Then put your phone in there. Have your headphones on. Nobody won't even know what you're doing. But I hem the bottom. Again, like I said, you want to just... For me, I just fold it over twice and hemmed it close to the edge. I'm going to give this a good press. And my dress is ready to put on for today. And I'm going to have some more pictures coming soon at the end of this video. So stay tuned. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you went out and got this pattern. And if you did it, if you did, make sure you join that K Charles Couture sewing group. Send me some pictures over there so I can show everybody else what you've done. You may have to use a different pattern or maybe a different fabric. I don't know, but I want to see it. Whatever you did, let me know. You can also hit me down at kcharlescouture at gmail.com if there's anything you need to know. If there was some advice you wanted about this pattern or any other pattern, hit me up. I'm always checking my messages and I'll make sure I get back to you. I look forward to seeing you all soon. I can't wait to the next tutorial. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but because I'm in the area where it's nice and warm and y'all know I love a good sundress, it probably will be another sundress or maybe a variation of a sundress that I'm going to be doing. But I look forward to seeing you all soon again. Peace out.